Beneath the shadow of the Appalachian Mountains lies a story so entwined with vengeance and bloodshed it has become the stuff of American legend. Today we unearth the gritty saga of the Hatfields and McCoys, a feud that transformed the quiet valleys along the Tug Fork River into the battlegrounds of familial war. But what sparked this infamous conflict that would echo through the annals of history? This tale extends far beyond mere family discord, weaving itself through a nation trying to stitch itself back together after the Civil War. Welcome to American History Gazette, and enjoy the video. In the shadowed folds of the Appalachian Mountains, where the whisper of ancient woods meets the rugged breath of the land, a saga of rivalry and vengeance was born, etching the names of Hatfield and McCoy into the annals of American folklore. This tale, rooted in the borderlands of West Virginia and Kentucky, is not merely a story of two families, but a reflection of a nation struggling to heal in the wake of the Civil War. Here, amidst the haunting beauty of Appalachia, the deep scars of post-war reconstruction, economic strife, and a fierce yearning for autonomy set the stage for a legendary conflict. The Hatfields of West Virginia, led by the imposing figure of William Anderson, Devil Ants Hatfield, commanded respect and fear in equal measure. Their dominion, rich in timber, became both their fortress and their fiefdom enabling the Hatfields to wield significant power within their local communities. Across the churning waters of the Tug Fork River, the McCoys of Kentucky, helmed by the steadfast Randolph McCoy, carved out their existence. Despite their efforts, the McCoys often found themselves overshadowed by the prosperity of the Hatfields, a simmering ember of resentment waiting to ignite. The flames of discord were fanned by a series of seemingly minor skirmishes and disputes, dismissed by many as the cost of living in a region where the law was often a matter of personal enforcement. Yet, as these clashes grew in intensity, the bitterness that underpinned them deepened, weaving a complex tapestry of grievance and retribution. The incident that turned the rivalry into an all-out feud was as mundane as it was momentous. A dispute over the ownership of a single hog. This controversy, laughable in its simplicity, became a symbol of much deeper issues of property rights, honor, and the struggle for survival in the harsh Appalachian landscape. The situation escalated rapidly, fueled by a series of violent encounters, vendettas, and a thirst for justice that saw both families resort to the courtroom and the gun. The Burgoyne and coal industry's encroachment added fuel to the fire, introducing wealth and exploitation to the region and heightening the stakes of the conflict. Men and women bound by blood and loyalty found themselves caught in a cycle of aggression and reprisal that would mark the land and its people for generations. The narrative took a more sinister turn on an election day in 1882, a day marked by celebration and community, which instead became the prologue to a tragedy. The brutal beating of Ellison Hatfield by three of Randolph McCoy's sons was more than an act of personal aggression. It was an affront to the Hatfield name, answered with a swift and brutal form of frontier justice that saw the McCoy brothers executed in retribution. This bloody exchange set a chilling precedent for the conflict, transforming personal grievances into a vendetta soaked in blood. Yet, it was the New Year's Night Massacre of 1888 that would become one of the most infamous chapters of the feud, a harrowing tale of vengeance that would shock the nation. In the cold darkness, the Hatfields, led by the desire for retribution, launched a deadly assault on the home of Randolph McCoy. The attack left his family shattered, with two of his children dead and his wife grievously wounded. This act of savagery drew the eyes of the nation to the violence consuming the Tug Fork region, prompting an intervention by state authorities. Amidst the chaos emerged the figure of Bad Frank Phillips, a staunch McCoy ally whose relentless pursuit of justice, or vengeance, against the Hatfields escalated the violence to new heights. Leading a posse into the heart of Hatfield territory, Phillips' actions blurred the lines between lawmen and vigilante, igniting a series of deadly skirmishes that claimed lives on both sides. The ensuing legal battles, which saw the extradition of nine Hatfields to Kentucky, marked a pivotal moment in the feud, elevating it from the realm of family conflict to a national spectacle of law and order being tested by the fires of personal vendetta. The Battle of Grapevine Creek in 1888 marked a significant confrontation, where the authorities' attempt to arrest more Hatfield family members led to a fierce shootout. As the dust settled from the gunfire at Grapevine Creek, the turning point in the notorious Hatfield-McCoy feud became apparent. This pivotal battle, a dramatic clash that drew blood and gunfire, was not just another episode of vendetta but a catalyst for change, 
marking the moment when the long arm of the law began to tighten its grip on the lawlessness that had defined the Tug Fork region. The intense scrutiny from media outlets across the nation turned the feud into a spectacle, a narrative of American savagery that demanded intervention. This sensational coverage played a crucial role, drumming up public outcry and pushing for a legal clampdown on the cycle of violence that had ensnared the Hatfields and McCoys. The entry of state and federal powers into the fray underscored the magnitude of the conflict, elevating it from a local dispute to a symbol of national disorder. The legal battles, particularly the extradition fights that ascended to the prestigious halls of the U.S. Supreme Court, highlighted the intricate dance of jurisdiction and the burgoyning need for a centralized authority to adjudicate such deep-seated conflicts. The legal system, once a distant observer, now became an active participant in the feud, wielding trials, incarcerations, and the somber act of execution as testaments to the prevailing rule of law over the rule of retaliation. As the 19th century gave way to the dawn of the 20th, the Appalachian region stood on the cusp of transformation. The thrust of industrialization with the coal industry at its spearhead began to reshape the socio-economic landscape that had fueled the Hatfield-McCoy animosity. Employment in the mines offered a new beginning, a path away from the cycle of vengeance and towards economic stability. This shift not only provided alternate livelihoods for the descendants of the feuding families but also diluted the long-standing grudges that had once seemed insurmountable. The legacy of the Hatfield-McCoy feud has evolved from a violent chapter in American history into a symbol of reconciliation and cultural folklore, underscoring themes of loyalty, justice, and societal change. This story has transcended its origins to inspire books, films, and a celebrated miniseries, embedding itself in the American imagination and highlighting the feud as a point of national fascination. Efforts by descendants to forge bonds of friendship and publicly reconcile have demonstrated the capacity for healing, even earning recognition from the U.S. Senate. These acts of reconciliation showcase the power of overcoming deep-seated divisions, reinforcing the feud's significance not just as a historical event, but as a lesson in the human ability to find peace and mutual respect. Additionally, the feud reflects on the evolution of the American legal system and the complexities of governance in a rapidly changing society. As a part of American folklore, the Hatfields and McCoys remind us of our ability to learn from the past and work towards a future marked by understanding and peace. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button below. Make sure to check out our podcast up in the corner, where we post weekly episodes interviewing best-selling authors, expert historians, and combat veterans. If you want to support the channel, our Patreon is in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on our next adventure.